ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining our webinar. My name is Jenny Chong and I'll be your host today. I work for the Southwest UK Letting Division, permanently based here in Hong Kong, to better assist our overseas investors like yourselves who may have purchased UK properties for rental investment. Today I have the honour of inviting a few of my UK colleagues to join us. Jessica Thomason from our residential research department. Matthew Savage from our Residential Corporate Services team, Daniel Parker, Head of Region London Nettings, and our Head of Hong Kong International Residential Sales, Mark Elliott. We will have some time during the course of the webinar to ask speakers a few questions. If you would like to ask a question, please send them in to the below email address and we will do our best to answer as many as possible. Without further ado, I'd like to invite Jess to give you all an update on what has happened to the lettings market during the course of Q4 2021 and Q1 2022. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Jenny. So yes, today I'm going to give you an update on the prime London rental markets. I'll discuss the significant shift that we've seen between supply and demand over recent months, how that's impacted prime rental values, and also share our five-year rental forecasts. So if we begin with demand, and I'm sure many of you are aware over much of 2020, generally we saw lower levels of demand across the capital, given the restrictions and lockdown which were in place over that time period. But from the latter half of 2021 and into this year, we have seen a significant return of demand to the capital. And that's namely been from a number of key tenant groups, so particularly students, young professionals, so many of whom are returning to the office, international tenants um, as being able to travel um, given the easing of travel restrictions, and also corporate relocations, many of which moves were put on hold over the course of the pandemic. And over the first two months of 2022, across our Savills London offices, we've registered more new applicants than the first two months of any year for the past five years. So that strong return of demand has very much continued into 2022. But it has meant that there is definitely more competition across the prime London market. And as such, many tenants have um, started to widen their search criteria be that um, with property attributes and being more flexible around their um, requirements, but also in terms of location. Over the first quarter of this year, our Savills agents suggested that around a third of their applicants were looking across multiple locations. And as we've seen this return to urban and um, this return to the office, the proximity to transport links and indeed the office itself has become increasingly important um, once again for many of our tenants. Now, in terms of supply, we have seen a very significant um, shift in terms of supply available across the prime London markets over recent months. During 2020, those lower levels of demand, which I've previously discussed, also some additional stock which came to the market at the very start of lockdown, did mean that generally there were um, higher levels of stock available across Prime London. And as such, applicants per available property for our London offices were below the historic norm. But from June 2021, as highlighted on the chart, we started to see that increase in demand returning to the capital. And as such, any surplus stock was quickly eroded. And you can see the applicants per property increasing significantly over the latter half of last year. Now, as we've started 2022, we do still have very much of a shortage of stock across Prime London. And that strong demand has maintained and continued into 2022. So we do still have um, a very high level of applicants per available properties across our London offices. So we have a shortage of stock um, and high levels of demand. So what does all of this mean in terms of rental values? Well, undoubtedly, we have experienced um, significant rental growth over the recent months and that recovery across London started over the second half of last year and has continued into this year. On average, over the first three months of this year, across all Prime London, we've seen rents increase by 3.4% and in the year to March 2022, on average, across all Prime London, rents increasing by 11.1%. 
And that's actually the strongest annual rental growth that we've seen across London for over 10 years. It is important to put that strong annual rental growth in terms of the pandemic. So if we look since the pandemic, so from March 2020 to March 2022, rents have increased by an average of 5% over that two year period. We've seen any falls seen at the start of the pandemic have been recovered and then rents have further increased. Now, in recent months, we have started to see a shift in the trends of where this rental growth is coming from. Now, across all prime London, for much of the pandemic, it was larger properties and houses which were more um, robust and more insulated to those significant falls. But over um, the past few months, we have actually seen a strong recovery for flats across the capital. So over the year to March 2020, across all prime London, flats have increased by an average of 11.7%, outperforming all prime London houses where rents have increased by 10.2%. And that shift in trends is mainly due to the return of key tenant groups, but also the lack of available stock across the capital, which has seen um, people um, look for those smaller properties. So what does all of this mean as we look forward? Well, here are our prime rental forecasts for the next five years to 2026. Now, in the short term, given the significant imbalance between supply and demand, we do expect that that strong competition that we're seeing in the market will continue at least in the short term. And as such, we are forecasting rental increases of 4% over the course of this year across all prime London. Now, there is still significant capacity for further growth um, in the long term, and that's given where we are in this rental cycle. In the five years to 2020, on average across all prime London, rents actually fell by 9.9%. Um, so that means there is still significant capacity for further rental growth, despite the strong rebound we've seen recently. So over the five year period to 2026, we are forecasting total rental growth across all prime London of just under 14%. That's everything from me, but I do think we've had a question um, let me from Mr. Liu. He is asking from Mr. Yes, yes. He is asking if we expect current rental trends to be the same in the next six months um, as he is deciding whether to buy a property which is completed or completes later this year. Um, well, Mr. Yu, I've just touched on our prime forecast. So we are forecasting rental growth of 4% over the um, course of 2022 and there is um, significant capacity for further growth over the five year period. But in terms of specific trends, at the moment we do have that significant imbalance between supply and demand and that's really maintaining the strong competition across the market and keeping that pressure on rents and um, we are expecting that will continue in the short term but over um, the course of the year there are many factors at play and we do expect that that um, significant imbalance between supply and demand will begin to unwind, although it may be um, um, it may unwind um, relatively slowly, as obviously the imbalance is re um, very acute currently. Um, also, in terms of capital values, um, probably um, something you may want to consider. We are forecasting um, for prices um, to increase by an average of 6% across all prime London over 2022. So um, across our prime central London um, areas, that's a forecast of 8% over 2022 and 4% um, for our outer prime London region. So um, hopefully that was useful to you. And thank you everyone for joining. Now I'll hand you back to Jenny. I'm sure whilst you were presenting, many of our viewers were also busy trying to screen have all the graphs and stats you showed, whilst of course also listening to you speak. I must say our company takes pride in the amount of investment put into our research department so we can generate these data to better advise our clients. Thank you very much, Jess. Next, we have Matt from our residential corporate service team who will give you his take on the corporate tenant market and how they have been performing over the course of this quarter. Over to you, Matt. 
Thank you so much, Jenny. Good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, I'm Matthew Savage. I run the Corporate Services Department here in Savills in the UK. And we deal with corporate relocation. So companies are relocating staff into the UK and also companies finding accommodation on behalf of their staff as well if they're putting it in their, the company name. So um, I just wanted to give a little bit of an overview of the sort of last four years in the corporate relocation market in the UK. We've obviously had quite a tumultuous time over those years because of the pandemic. Um, so I just want to put this on a chart here to demonstrate that. So the, the middle line, the red line, um, demonstrates the weekly number of inquiries over the year in 2019. And you can see that it's quite stable, quite consistent throughout the year, um, around the 100 uh, inquiries a week mark, with spikes in the beginning of the year when relocation budgets are refreshed. A bit of movement um, in the summer, which is normally our, our busiest time of year, and then tailing off towards the end of the year, as we'd normally expect. 2020, which is the yellow line, started very similarly, yet when the pandemic hit, fell off a cliff, which is understandable because international movement was severely restricted very, very quickly. However, the interesting points to note are the strength in the corporate demand in the UK, because every time in 2020 where you can see the spikes, Travel restrictions were lifted, there was a return to more normality. We saw spikes in activity because companies still had these projects to carry on with. They still had the willingness and, and the, the need to relocate individuals into the UK. So we did get quite a lot of activity as the year went on. Further demonstrated in 2021, where at the beginning we went into another lockdown, so we had significant restrictions. But throughout the year, restrictions lifted and the demand really, really grew forward. And we can see that with the purple line towards the end of the year, much higher demand than even in 2019, with all the pent up demand from 2020, where companies couldn't move people moving into 2021. And in 2022, to where we are right now, the green line on this chart, you can see that that pent up demand continues. So where are we now? We're operating typically at about 10% over uh, in terms of demand what we'd see at this time of year in a normal year. We're seeing really varied demographics come through. So be that geog uh, geographical, people coming in from all over the world, but also from an industry sector. We're seeing uh, people come in from um, all different industries, from high commissions and embassies, the diplomatic sector, to law professional services, right through to sports teams um, and production companies who are putting on productions and finding accommodation for staff, for crew, uh, but also for actors and actresses who are working on those productions as well. So a real varied mix. One thing that has changed in this market that Jess has talked about, the restriction on available property in the UK in the lettings markets, is that we've seen more property led searches in the corporate market. So what that means is traditionally in normal times when there's plentiful available property, we've seen people have real geographical preferences coming to us saying, I really want to be in zone one in London, or I need to be, I really want to be in Canary Wharf, or I absolutely have to be on the suburbs of Manchester. What what has happened now is that they're coming in and they're much more footloose because they understand that available property is very thin on the ground. So if there's good property in a location that they wouldn't have necessarily considered previously, they're now very much considering it. And another reason for that as well is because a lot of people are still working from home a little bit. Even if they're being relocated, they're still looking for work from home space, that office area, the second bedroom, whatever it may be that they can use as that uh, comfortable work from home space as well. Um, we are seeing a really large summer pipeline pick up. Um, we'd normally see that this time of year, but it's even bigger than normal with pent up demand. So again, from varied industry sectors, we're looking at a really strong summer this year in terms of demand. So we're just hoping we've got the property to, to facilitate that as well. Um, and looking at the industry sectors, Tech, it won't surprise many of you, is significantly dominant in terms of number at the moment. For example, companies like Meta um, and TikTok have told us that they need to bring in about 10,000 people, both through relocation and recruitment in the next short period of time. So we're trying to facilitate that with available properties, getting properties to them quickly and seeing if we can get as many of those tenants housed as possible. But absolutely, tech is not the only one. Um, London's uh, London and the UK's industry is very diverse. We're seeing strong uh, in incoming demand from the law and professional services sector. Oil and gas is once again quite uh, prevalent because the price prices for energy here are quite high. So uh, I think they're doing quite good business at the moment. Um, but also everything in between uh, sports firms, for example, um, and all, all, all and sundry are very busy right now. 
So what does that mean for the future? What does the future hold for the corporate market? Well, it's a really positive time for landlords. I've talked a lot about the demand, which is really strong and will continue to be so. But I've also, I haven't mentioned the flexibility now as well. One of the things that's happened in recent times is companies and relocation agents who work with them have had to be a lot more flexible. I've talked about that from a geographical perspective, but also from a tenancy terms perspective. Many of you who have let to corporate tenants before have probably seen the terms of that tenancy be quite tenant sided in some circumstances, whether that's through break clauses and options to renew that are tenant sided being introduced into the tenancy. Well, now they understand that they're in a much more competitive market. There are tenants that aren't from the corporate sector who are offering two years straight, who are offering good rental values. So they're having to compete with that. So we're seeing less reliance on those terms and a bit more flexibility there, which is good news for tenants, uh, for landlords moving forwards as well. Looking at the industry sectors, we've talked a lot about tech and the professional services and diplomatic uh, sectors, which are providing a lot of tenants. But looking to the future, we've had a lot of interest and activity and office take up from biosciences firms in the UK, both in London, but also in the cities outside of London, Birmingham, Manchester, Cambridge, Oxford. Um, and I believe that's going to be quite a significant sector from international movement moving forwards as well. The themes that we've seen created in the pandemic, I've already mentioned the work from home, but also the flexibility and that footloose nature of tenants being more product or property led rather than geography led will continue into the future. I can see that happening already. And already mentioned it briefly, but regional cities grow in popularity. We've seen great um, interest in Manchester, for example, from companies like BBC and media firms that are setting up in, in Media City in Salford, amongst many other firms. But cities like Bristol, Birmingham, Cambridge, Oxford and Edinburgh in Scotland as well are increasingly popular. And I think corporate activity with companies opening either second offices or new head offices uh, in those locations are going to grow the popularity there as well. And what we've seen from the market from the tenant side, so from dealing with our relocation agents and from the companies directly, is that their relationships with us um, as agents is more important than ever to them because stock and available property is so thin on the ground that they're looking for advice, help and assistance as to where the property is going to come, what areas are going to likely yield that property for them, and where they need to be looking moving forwards, and also how can they be more competitive? How can they put themselves at the front of the queue when uh, in a landlord's eyes? They're looking at all the offers that they might receive. So we're offering all that advice to try and help them find uh, the best property as well. And they're leaning on us a lot more than ever. So that's a really quick snapshot of the corporate markets, um, where we've got to, to where we are today and the future. And I noticed a couple of questions actually came in. So I'd just like to take the opportunity to answer those now as well. Um, firstly, Mr. Law asks, I've been renting to corporate tenants uh, for a for quite some time. How do I just get my property in front of the corporate tenant? So how do I just market my property to the corporates? Well, we can do that in our team um, because of the relationships we have with the relocation firms, but also the companies directly. We can take our property details and push them directly to um, the, the decision makers in those firms. So not only can you um, advertise your property on the open market, but we can also take that directly to corporates. So we have the facility to do that for you. Um, another question um, is Mrs. Lee. Um, do I really have to furnish my property at the moment? Um, because it's, it is expensive in the UK to supply furniture. Yes, there's, there's no doubt. Um, certainly furnishing is expensive. Um, I would say that the best advice I think I can give is, is approach that with an open mind and be flexible. Um, I've mentioned that the tenant side, certainly from the corporate markets, and actually all of our tenants have had to be more flexible. Uh, we've seen more of our inquiries come through saying that they will be flexible on furnishings because they just want to find the right property and then they'll they'll worry about the furnishings afterwards. So if you as a landlord can approach that with an open mind to say, OK, well, if I get a really good tenant profile um, offer come through, but they do want it furnished, it's a negotiation point and say, OK, yes, you know, let's look at the furniture, but let's share the cost or um, with respect to increasing the rental price or whatever that may be. So it's there as a real negotiation, to, uh, negotiation tool for landlords at the moment, I believe. And on that point as well, if you did want to um, keep that flexibility, we can turn around furniture quite quickly through our interior services team. We've got relationships with all uh, different furnishing suppliers, so we can do that for you as well. OK, so I'll uh, hand back to Jenny. I hope that was uh, really informative, everybody. And if ever anyone has any further questions, please do feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matt. Well, it surely seems that the COVID-19 aftermath is on its way to recovery and the corporates are back in the game. What great news for our investors landlords. Next, I would like to invite Dan to speak at the buy to let market and his thoughts on how the demand and supply has evidently changed recently in the UK.
Thanks very much indeed, Jenny, and thanks very much for inviting me to speak on this webinar. Delighted to share uh, some of my thoughts such as they are. Um, OK, let's just see if I can share my presentation. OK, so yeah, supply and demand. Obviously, uh, the key factor in pricing uh, in any market. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about that, as Jenny says, um, and perhaps also uh, what's happening with the investor market over the past few months, as far as we see it. Um, and a couple of other things I've been keeping my eye on recently, uh, and I hope will be useful to you. So first up, um, let's have a look at landlord confidence. It's a it's a kind of fleeting and ephemeral thing, confidence, isn't it? Um, I think it's fair to say that in the years 2016 to 2020, uh, landlord investor confidence in the buy-to-let market in the UK was not uh, massively high. Um, this is some data according to the Mortgage Works who uh, prepare a number, a fairly large proportion actually, of buy-to-let mortgages in the UK. Um, I think the thing that moved most severely against landlords in that period was the mounting wall of legislation brought in by the government to regulate the sector uh, and also the taxation changes that you'll all know about uh, that did not mitigate in landlords' favour. Um, but the good news over the past year, according to these figures, and I'm sorry, they're not um, Q1 2022, but they're as up to date as we have. The, the, Q, the Q1 2022 figures, I think, will be out in the next few days. Um, but until the end of 2021, that confidence as a landlord is at a uh, at a five year high, according to the Mortgage Works. Now, why would that be? Um, so, if you look at the graphic below, the, the second graphic, um, it's very clear that the clients of the Mortgage Works think that uh, over the last year, um, they have more confidence in the future for their capital gains in their property, so the the value of the property, and also in their rental yields. So, two things operating in the same direction, um, clearly. As far as a landlord, uh, that is notionally good news. And on to what we think about why that might be. So this is Savile's data now. This is our own uh, our own rental index, which which measures uh, growth or otherwise of uh, of rents and of capital values of prices. Um, so if you look at the, I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a festival of figures, isn't it? But if you look at the first column there in Prime Central London, I suppose bad news first. Um, since 2014. Uh, we believe that prices, uh, the price, uh, the headline prices, the, the sales prices uh, of property in prime central London has gone down by 18 percent. Um, and if you look below um, on the on the same line in, in the graph below, uh, we think that rental growth has shrunk. So there's been a, a fall of 13.7 percent in rent. So, I mean, obviously, fairly bad news all around in prime central London as far as values go. But you'll see that even there, with rents uh, shrinking less quickly than prices, capital values, uh, yields have improved. On to the much better news, which I've highlighted in uh, in green. So for the last year in prime central London, um, we think that rents have gone up by just about 11%. I think Jess talked earlier about a, a, a figure nationally for Savills of about 11.4%, so not far off that. Um, and we think that capital growth has been about 3%. So Again, big recoveries uh, and rents in terms of uh, uh, percentages, rental growth outstripping uh, sales growth, so yields improving. You go to a marketplace that's been better all round over the last few years in prime southwest London. You'll see there are three columns along. Um, so growth in capital value is about 3% since peak, but growth in rents 7.5%. And again, there, 9% over the last year. So uh, you know, some big acceleration in rental growth over the over the last period. Um, and some good news over the course of the last uh, you know, six, seven years in terms of uh, yield as well. And then the most extreme example in London is this is uh, broadly a London webinar, I know. Um, prime North and East London lost about 3% in capital value in, in the last uh, six, seven years, um, but 15% uh, up in rents so or 14.9% up in rent. So considerable acceleration of yield and all of that pretty much. Uh, with some peaks and troughs in between coming in the last year with 15% rental growth in the last year. So good news over the last year or so for those of you with um, with investments in that part of London. Um, so I think that that probably informs some of the reason why investor confidence is higher in spite of a lot of those barriers to entry. Um, it's higher now than it has been over the course of the last uh, six to seven years. Um, so I thought 
uh, a couple of other things that have been on my mind and might be useful to you. Um, so you, you will have heard, as I, I referred back to Jess Tomlinson's uh, presenta presentation, talking about the 11.4% rent increases across the board. Some of you may have heard um, some stories of 20 to 30% rent increases over the last year. I think um, those have happened in pockets of the marketplace, usually coming from a low base and after significant falls that happened during the pandemic. So it, it's correct, there have been some fairly extraordinary rental increases over the last year or so in, in some places. I would say that clearly we can't expect those to continue and that we're going into a period of stabilisation, um, I think, in rents now as as applicants, uh, applicant demand stabilises. I think we're, we're applicant demand about 15 to 20 percent higher in London that we've seen at any other time of year for this time of year uh, in the last 10 years. But um, I think that applicant demand will start to stabilise and that will mean that uh, that prices probably stabilise as well. Uh, but with those record rents, um, it's probably a good thing to consider whether now is the right time to, to enter the market. You saw some of those capital values, the uh, sales prices are still well below their 2014 peak in London in some markets and not far above uh, in most markets. Um, so with rents at a record high, I suppose the question is, um, is, it, is it a good time now with yields as good as they've been for a long time um, to get into the marketplace in spite of all those barriers to entry in terms of taxation? Um, I wanted to say something very briefly about regional cities which fall under my remit. Um, so our Oxford, Cambridge, Edinburgh, Birmingham, Manchester offices are all, um, are all reporting to me in one way or another. Um, I, I couldn't leave the webinar talking about London and not just have a quick nod to those marketplaces. I mean, I think if you're looking to to invest your money in a, in a relatively safe regional market uh, where demand is likely to stay very high, but perhaps the entry point in terms of price is higher, um, then you will be looking at Oxford, Cambridge and Edinburgh, which have seen fairly extraordinary uh, demand from applicants over the course of the last year or so, and are also driven by um, driven by heavy government government investment, uh, trying to get uh, trying to get um, some activity into the regions uh, in terms of uh, commercial relocation, corporate relocation. And I think you heard about that from Matt a bit earlier as well, Matt Salvage. Um, Birmingham and Manchester are a particular kind of favourites of mine. Uh, I think because uh, because those marketplaces are they're so they're changing so quickly and are so dynamic. Uh, and as an investor, um, to take advantage of those, uh, I think would be a, a bright thing to be doing. Um, and finally, just a word on taxation and regulation and compliance, which I know you know for any of you in the UK market now will have been. Uh, an issue over the course of the last few years. We can't help with the taxation bit that we can uh, introduce you to people who might be able to, but in terms of regulation and compliance, um, Savills are the leaders in the marketplace. And I think I, I know that's not, <laughs> it's not necessarily something that's uh, front and centre of a pitch when we're talking to investors, um, but it is, it is a safe pair of hands as far as, uh, as far as, uh, as far as that's concerned. Teresa Wallace, who's our head of uh, head of compliance at Savills Lessons Compliance, uh, sits on several government bodies and advises those government bodies on um, the perspective from the marketplace on those legislation changes. And we are very often first to the table in terms of the changes we make to our own processes to protect you. So please do uh, bear that in mind when choosing your agent. Couldn't get through a presentation without uh, making a pitch for Savills, clearly. Um, I think uh, my last thing uh, to answer was uh, a question from Miss Young, which came in uh, came into Jenny. Um, she asked if she decided to, if I had four to five hundred thousand pounds to invest, um, should I should I take a one bedroom property in the centre of London, or perhaps look at something a little bit further out um, and go for uh, go for two bedrooms? Well, I mean, I think you've seen the fact that that capital values in prime central London have uh, have gone down quite a lot over the course of the last six to seven years. So you would. You would be a wise person, I think, to to bet on those values improving. So I think a one bedroom property in prime central London would be a, a very good call, particularly with those rent increases over the last uh, the last little while. But if you weren't going to do that, then perhaps back to my uh, my fondness for the regional cities and somewhere like Birmingham or Manchester. If you took that money, you could buy two properties um, fairly comfortably in some of the best developments in town, certainly one bedroom properties, um, and take advantage of uh, the fact that those marketplaces, I think, are going to continue to improve 
uh, fairly rapidly over the course of the next couple of years. So uh, that is all from me. Thank you very much indeed. Hope it's been a helpful canter through uh, the investor market. Um, thank you very much, Jenny, and back to you. Thank you very much, Dan. That was some great insight you shared with us. I feel maybe some of our viewers may have jotted some special notes for themselves to take away too from this. Last but not least, I'd like to invite our Head of Hong Kong International Residential Sales, Mark Elliott, to share his thoughts from the sales point of view. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Matthew. That was great. Um, I think a few takeaways from my perspective and from, from the viewers watching is that, uh, you know, obviously the rental market in the UK is very buoyant. There are there is a lot of demand for completed property in good locations and in good schemes. And it's coming predominantly from you know, overseas students, but also from corporate tenants, as they touched on. So I think from your perspective, it's have a chat with myself or one of the brokers, understand which of those schemes are really in demand and where you can get that really strong yield. But most importantly, as an overseas investor, where is going to rent? without a void, where it's going to rent straight away and where it's going to continue to the rent until the day comes when you decide to sell. Um, here at Savills, we can help you navigate and decide that with the help of the guys that you've just listened to in the UK. So thank you very much for your time and join us again next time. That's all we have time for today, I'm afraid. Thank you to those that have sent through their questions. Those that we have managed to answer, we will get back to you personally. A huge thank you to our speakers today, Jessica, Matt, Dan and Mark. If you need any further assistance, please do not hesitate to contact myself directly or contact our Hong Kong International Residential Sales Team here in Hong Kong. See you again soon.